Mr. Garage here, and I just got my jet kit and a toolbox sticker, and if you can't tell, I love toolbox stickers. I just got this in from Six Sigma Jet Kit. They're here in Arizona, local company. Uh, these jets are going to be for our 3500 watt Predator generator that runs way too rich, which is probably the most widespread problem among all the Predator generators. They run extremely rich. From what I understand, it's a 76 jet factory, same carburetor as the 6.5 212cc standalone engine that they sell. And um, basically the case is sealed so well, it just simply runs rich. So uh, our plugs are always black as the ace of spades, but I do run iridium plugs. So uh, with that, uh, they it doesn't lose spark. So they actually will still fire, they still run, they still run altitude, but they clog up the spark arrestor very, very easily. So yeah, we're gonna be trying a couple different jets here. I think I have a 65 and a 68 that we're gonna try out because it runs so rich. I'm gonna start with those jets, probably a 68 first. And we're going to see how that does compared to the stock uh, 78 jet, number 78 that's in it right now. And also we'll verify if it's actually a number 78 in it. That's just what I've read online. So yeah, we'll get started and uh, be right back. All right, so step one, we're going to take off this side panel. Quick and easy thing to do. side panels off so now we're gonna unsnap our air filter see if I can bring the camera over closer I see more what I'm doing here take off our air filter mind you I have not changed a carb on this before so I am doing this along with you guys. So that goes like that. Looks like we're gonna need to take off the, the hose assembly. Goes into this little air filter. A little breather line or something. I'm not sure what it is. There we go. get lucky there we go all right so our air filters out now my hands are nice and oily okay so got two bolts we get one here and one here they look like 10 millimeter so we're gonna grab a ratchet real quick And we can nearly change this jet out without even taking off the air filter. You actually might be able to, but we'll just go ahead and take it off just for the sake of the video. I didn't think you could initially, but yeah, it looks like one bolt that holds in the bowl, and we can take it off. So. Okay, we've got another line right here. This is probably like the PCV valve kind of thing for it, a breather valve. You grab a small pair of hose clamps or hose pliers. Let's see if we can work this guy loose. Sweet. Okay, now we'll Still no. We got one more 10 millimeter hiding down here. You can see that. Okay, so we got two nuts and a bolt, all 10 millimeter. Now, there we go. 
So that's our air filter box. We got one thin little gasket. We got our looks like a throttle body there. I wonder. Okay. So on run, it doesn't do anything. But if I put it, it's interesting. I got a little line of fuel coming down. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's shifting down. It's coming down. Anyways, um, runs there. And if we put it all the way to start, that is choke. So it chokes it off. So there we go. When we're off, I notice the line's completely slack. Now, what I don't know is if that um, run and start switch, I don't know if that cuts off fuel as well. So I don't know if I pull the fuel line, if this, this thing is just gonna start pouring fuel out of the tank. So that's something I don't know. So let me investigate that and I'll be back on the video in just a minute. All right, I'm back. Um, good news is it does look like the fuel tank goes to the off switch and all that. So um, we are gonna have to drain the fuel out of the bowl and which would be here. So we're gonna take a little glass jar it right here not use a 10 millimeter come on man you know better and uh, we're gonna need a little flathead screwdriver to drain the bowl you gotta actually look at it this will be the drain for the bowl i'm gonna open this up cool and this is gonna get all our fuel out of here Here. I don't want to have stinky gasoline on my hands all night. Let me grab some gloves. That's lovely. My son ran me out of gloves. I got some thick black ones, so put these on real quick. Okay. We're taking a 10 mil again. We're gonna go ahead and take off the bowl. And that should let us, oh, that was nice. A little bit more fuel in there still. Should let us uh, take this off, just this 110. Okay, it's got a copper gasket it looks like. Oh, nope, not copper. Just a red plastic or rubber gasket. Okay, so that's our bowl. You guys can see it. We do have a little O-ring that seals it. And um, let me set this aside. All right, and now I need to get a little flathead screwdriver. Our main jet is gonna be right here. And let me see if I got a short enough screwdriver. Flathead screwdriver. That's what I need. I need something small enough to just get in here. It's kind of a very small diameter or a small width of a flathead to get the jet out. So I need to get some really kind of narrow to get up in there. So we're going to keep unscrewing. Come on. Come on, little jet. Hands are slippery from the fuel. It's kind of hard to hold on to this little guy. Wow, a lot of threads this out. That's easier because my gloves are just slipping. Motion tube just fell and the jet fell. So it's not held in by anything. It's our emulsion tube. It's uh, four sided. 
Actually has holes on four different spots. That's kind of cool. Okay. And our main jet. Went down somewhere. And I got it. Cool. All right, got our little main jet out. Now let's see if rumors are true on the size. They are 76. So that's a 76. Okay, so we'll be putting our tube back up inside and we're going to be putting our um, 68 jet in and uh, we're going to run it under load and see how it runs check the spark plug and see what the spark plug looks like after a little bit under load and um, yeah and if everything's good then we're set if it's not good then we're gonna have to probably adjust either lower or higher value jet so kind of common sense but yeah we'll get to that um, I'll be back in a little while okay so we've got our number 68 jet installed everything is back together um, I'm not gonna bore you with that process because you just watched me take it apart so we're going to go ahead and put it on run. I'm going to sit a minute. I'm going to wait for the bowl to fill back up. And we'll kind of pre-start it in here in the garage. Um, just want to make sure it runs before I put the side panel back on and then and then drag it all the way outside to, to check it out. So um, when I take it outside, we're going to load test it. I'm just going to plug in a heat gun to it, 1500 watts. And I'm going to let it run for a while, uh, maybe 30 minutes or so, just get real warm if everything sounds good. And then we'll take a look at the plug and uh, go from there. And it may take longer than that to clean off the plug. Um, I don't have a replacement here because, I, like I said, I bought Iridium. So when I buy Iridium for a machine, it pretty much almost is the life of the machine. It lasts forever. So anyways, I'll shut up. Let's uh, throw this thing to start. ESC off. Let's just uh, see if it starts up. Just a little side note, I got two heat guns going. We're drawing 24.5 amps. Now the max on this generator is 25 amps. So, um, well, it actually surges beyond that, but that's the maximum safe. So we're peaking this thing out. I'm running the hell out of it with this number 68 jet. We're gonna let it run for a little bit um, and kind of see where it is. I realized with the single heat gun, we were only about half throttle. So I went ahead and added a second one, ramped it up and uh, let's see what happens. All right, for 20 minutes now, this thing has been converting dinosaurs into horsepower, into Edison's and into coils, generating heat on two heat guns. So what I'm gonna be doing now is pulling the side panel. We're gonna pull the spark plug and we're gonna take a look to see if this thing is burning super lean now with the number 68 or if it's hopefully spot on. I can say I don't think I can ever remember the generator running this smooth, it never ran bad but this thing has been glass smooth. You heard it before it start up and you can hear it again right now. So this thing is running super smooth. So we'll check it out and uh, see what this plug looks like. I wanted to take this shot really quick. So um, this is with the heat guns unplugged. It's back to an idle. And um, this thing is just running glass smooth right now. We're at 1100 feet here in Phoenix. And my only modifications to this guy are of course the number 68 jet that I just put in. Um, I've got, uh, the hole's drilled in the case, so I've got a little bit of a case mod and an iridium spark plug. That's it. So let's get this side panel off, take a look at the plug. Look at that plug. I just showed a closer up photo of it. That plug is perfect for 1100 feet. This engine has never run better. 
I know when I get to altitude up at 7,000 feet where we camp, it is really, really going to run better because it was just puking fuel before and, and black as the ace of spades in the plug. In my previous uh, video um, on my channel, if you guys take a look at it, I do a whole maintenance video on the Predator generators, kind of showing you what you need to do to keep the thing up. Now, um, in that video, you'll see when I pulled that plug, that plug was pitch black. So it was completely technically fouled out, but it still fires because it's iridium and iridium plugs, but it uh, was completely fouled out. And now after having this number 68 kit in running full tilt for 20 minutes, my plug is completely cleaned up. It's the right color. It's not overly white. Um, yeah, this, this was a win. So number 68 is where it's at for me, 1100 foot altitude here in Phoenix. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching and maybe this will help some of you guys get your generators running a whole hell of a lot better than they're already running right now. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. Again, random stuff all the time. Almost forgot the most important part. I'm starting to run out of room. This is getting ridiculous.